All right, well, when you're given two points and they want slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, there's two things you have to find, right? There's slope and there's y intercept. Before I even worry about the slope, looking at the two points that they happen to give me in this particular question, do I know the m or the b here? If they give me 2, 1 and 0, negative 7, think about where these points are. Well, you know the y or the b. What's the b? It's negative 7. Why is the b negative 7 here? Because where is that point 0, negative 7? Isn't that point on the y-axis? So isn't that going to be my y-intercept? Now, if you don't realize that, it's okay. You can still do it one of the other two ways after you find the slope. So the slope, we're going to do you know, y1, so 1 minus a negative 7 or 1 plus 7 over 2 minus 0. So you get 8 over 2 or 4. If you recognize that this was your y-intercept, you could be done now and say y equals 4x minus 7, and you could be done. If you didn't recognize that this was a y-intercept, you still could have done one of the two other methods of plugging in for x and y into y equals mx plus b, or using the point slope form. So maybe you didn't recognize that this was a y-intercept, and you said, well, let's just plug in the 1 for the y. We know the slope is 4. We plug in the 2, right? And we go 1 equals 8 plus b, subtract the 8, and b is negative 7. So you would have got negative 7 that way. Remember, it, it, like the, all these things are tied together. You should be able to get the same answer no matter whether you do it this way, whether you do it the point slope form where you go y minus 1 equals your slope x minus 2 and you distribute and combine like terms, right? You can do it this way. y minus 1 equals 4x minus 8, add the 1, and again you get y equals 4x minus 7. You can do it that way. Or what would be the third way in this case you could have done this? Right from the beginning you could have recognized, oh, that is my y-intercept, right? So I already knew my y-intercept. All I really had to do was find the slope, and I could have done that. And again, is there multiple ways to find the slope? You can use a slope formula, or what's another way to find the slope? Can you just plot the two points and count? You could just 2, 1, and 0, negative 7. You could just, you could just grab a piece of graph paper and go 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then you just count. What's my rise? My rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 over 2. So 8 over 2, which reduces to 4. That's another way. I don't really like this method that much. Why? Why do I always tend to do the slope formula sometimes instead of the this? Numbers are too big. The numbers are too big. Sometimes you run into decimals. And it's so easy to just miscount. It's so easy just to make a silly mistake, whether you're plotting the point slightly wrong or just when you go to count, you count that as 9 instead of 8. It's just, it's just easy to make a mistake that way. I prefer the slope formula over the graphing method. Plus, I think it's faster. I think it's faster to use the slope formula than it is to plot the points and then count. But that's just me. And again, on test day, on quiz day, quiz on Friday. When you take your quizzes, when you take your test, and it's high, 
high stakes. You know, like, I need to get this question right. Almost every single one of these questions, can you do them multiple ways? And what would be the benefit of, especially on the test or quiz, doing things multiple ways? If you get the same answer two different ways, you know you got it right, right? So, anything else on the worksheet? All right, turn those in. Maybe I should do a rotating thing and not make no, it's no longer, Yeah, it's Cameron's No, no, it's a whole market period. It's not my week. Why, why does Cameron get a whole market period? I had a whole, I had the whole first year. No, the whole first year. First year? Give one of these to Hunter. Ah, pass it on some graphic. Oh, yeah. Noah, Ah, using a piece of graph paper. Okay? Using a piece of graph paper. What I would like you guys to do. Graph. The equation y equals 2x. Minus 4. How do you graph the equation y equals 2x minus 4? You start at where? Careful. Negative 4. So start at down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. All right. Close enough. Want me to draw it a little bit better? I'll draw it a little bit better. I'll cheat and I'll use this. Ah, you're cheating. I'm a big cheater. You're cheating. Big, big cheater. Alright, so there's my line. My question to you What does that word mean? What does the word parallel mean? Running the same direction. Okay? So, my question to you would be, what would be a different line that would be parallel to this line? Okay? First um, off, how would I draw it? How would I draw another parallel line to that? Huh? So you tell me where I'm parallel. Same direction. 
parallel lines will always, always have the same slope. Parallel lines, same slope. Easy. So, if I said I have a line, y equals 3 fourths x minus 7. Tell me another line that's parallel to this one. y equals 3 over 4 x minus 3. Give me another one. y equals 3 over 4 x plus 9. Plus 9. Give me another one. What's the only thing that has to happen? The slopes all have to be the exact same, and then the y-intercepts would just be different. Does it matter what these other numbers are? No, but we all know they're just going to be parallel. The only difference is do we have a line here, do we have a line here, do we have a line up here, do we have a line down there? But all of them are going to be parallel. The only thing that's changing is that starting point. Yes? Yes. So here's a tough question for you. If I said I have a line y equals 4x minus 9, okay? And I have a point 8, 2. And I said, write me the equation of a line. Find the equation of a line. That is parallel to that and goes through that. I said I have a I need to find the equation of a line that's parallel to this thing and it goes through that thing. Think about your y think about your two methods. Y equals mx plus b. Do I know my slope? Yeah. Where am I gonna get my slope from? What's my slope here? So what's the slope of my new line have to be? Four. Four. Now, do I have a point that I can plug in? Yes. Yeah, eight, two. So the y becomes a two, the eight becomes a, or the x becomes a eight. eight. I get two equals 32 plus b, subtract the 32, and b is negative 30. My answer is y equals 4x. Four. Four minus 30. I could do it that way. Or, couldn't I have used point slope form? I could have also said y minus my y equals my slope x minus my x. And if you distribute and combine like terms, you're going to end up with the exact same thing. Which of these two methods should you use? Whichever one you like better. Right? Is this problem really any different than the worksheet you just turned in where I gave you the slope and a point and said find the equation? Is that problem that we just did any different than these? No. The only real difference is you have to know that if two lines are parallel, they have what? The same slope. The same slope. So whatever the slope of that is, then the slope, that's the slope of my new line. Easy? All right. I would like everyone on their graph paper to now graph y equals 3 fifths x minus 2. as carefully as they can. Down two, and then I go up one, two, three, over one, two, three, four, 
five. Up one, two, three, over one, two, three, four, five. Okay? And as carefully as you can, I'm gonna cheat. Draw that line. Alright, I'm just going to draw a second line <coughs> on here, but I want you guys to tell me to rotate it until I'm done. What I want now is instead of parallel, perpendicular. What does perpendicular mean? They do intersect, but how do they intersect? What does that mean? You can't just say it intersects perpendicularly. What does the word per perpendicular mean? They meet at a? What? They don't meet at a certain point. They, they can meet anywhere. But they meet at a? Right angle. Is that a right angle between my two lines? No. All right. My question to you. This is all going to be about slope. What's the slope of this line up here? Three fifths, right? What do you think the slope of my perpendicular line is going to be? It's going to have a slope. So tell me, when I start rotating, tell me when you think I, I'm at a right angle. Right there. Right there? Does it look right? Yeah. Yes? No? Yeah. Yeah? You guys all agree? Yeah. Okay, what do you think the slope of that line is? Five over three. Huh? Five over three. Five over three? So up five over three? So you're saying I go up five over three? Yeah. No. Is this going to be a positive or a negative slope? It's negative. That's going to be negative. It's gonna definitely going to be negative. Okay? So do you think it's up, or so you think it's down three over five? Yeah. So if I go, let's say, here's a decent point. I should be able to go down three, one, two, three, no, over no. one, two, three, down four, five. Over five. Three. You think it's down five over three? Oh, yeah. So let's see, down one, two, three, four, five, over one, two, three. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. So here's how this works. Parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular. Have what we call opposite reciprocal. Yeah. What does opposite mean? Negative or positive. Positive to negative. So if I have y equals 4 thirds x plus 8, and I said find a perpendicular line to that, if this is positive, my new one has to be negative, and reciprocal means flip it. So instead of 4 thirds, it'd be? Three fourths. And then does it matter what the y intercept is? No. So if I said I have a line y equals negative 3 sevenths x minus 2, and I said write me another line that's perpendicular to this one that has a different y intercept. Y equals positive 7 thirds. How'd you get positive 7 thirds? If this is negative, the new one becomes positive and you flip it. So you opposite it, so if it's positive, it goes negative. If it's negative, it goes positive, and you just flip it. And then you have another point. So now I can have this exact same type of question. I could give you this exact same question. Give you another line, y equals 3 fourths x minus 9. 
and then I give you a point 12 negative 1 and I said find the equation that is perpendicular to that and it goes through that point. Well, what is my slope then of my new line going to be? Well, the equation is negative, negative four one thirds. equals... It'd be what? Negative four, negative four thirds. So step one is you pull your slope out of here. The slope of this is three fourths. So the slope of my new line would be negative four thirds. Yes? Now you do it however you want. If you want to use y equals mx plus b, and you plug in the slope, and you plug in the x and the y, so the y was negative 1, the slope was 12, you solve it for b, or you use point slope form, where you'd say y minus the y, which would be plus 1, equals my slope, negative 4 thirds, x minus dx. It doesn't matter which of the two methods you use, you have that personal choice now. How many of you honestly still are like this method better? Anybody liking the point slope form? If, if nobody in this class likes the point slope form, I'll kind of stop using the point slope form. Okay? But it, it's not that it's a bad method. I think it's a really good method. I actually really like this method where I would distribute, and that's just negative 4 thirds times x, negative 4 thirds times 12, well, what's 12 divided by 3? 4 times 4. A negative times a negative would be a positive. All I have to now do is subtract the 1. And my answer is plus 15. I'll bet you, when you solve this, you'll get b equals 15. Are we good with these? The two things you have to know. Parallel lines have what? Exact same slope. If the slope before was 4 thirds, then it's still 4 thirds. If it's negative 9 eighths, it's still negative 9 eighths. Parallel lines have exactly the same slope. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Okay? Are we good with these? Easy. Okay, everybody take a look at page 353, 353. Okay, a lot of these are going to be quick questions. Basically just recognition questions. Three hundred and fifty three. Like if you look at number two, which lines are going to be parallel to each other? What are you looking for? All you're looking for is a slope. You're trying to find the slopes that are the same. Well, which one's going to be parallel to y equals six? What's the line y equals six looks like? Isn't that a horizontal line? Is there another horizontal line in there? Uh, yeah. Y equals negative 8. Wouldn't that one be parallel? So y equals 6. And y equals negative 8. Those are both going to be horizontal lines. Those are going to be parallel to each other. And then you have y equals 6x plus 5. What's the slope? Six. Is there another line there that has a slope of six? It would be y equals six x minus seven. So these two are parallel to each other, and these two are parallel to each other. Does that make sense? How about number three? Which ones are parallel? Which one's parallel to y equals three x or three fourths x minus one? Is there another one that has a slope of three fourths? Oh yeah. 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 There's one in point slope form, isn't there? So y minus three 
equals 3 fourths times, so both of those have a slope of 3 fourths. And then what about the y equals negative 2x? Is there another line that has a slope of negative 2? It'd be the last one, right? So it's just going to be grouping, just recognition. Same idea with number 5. You have y equals 2 thirds x minus 4. You have y equals negative 3 halves x plus 2. You have y equals negative 1. And you have x equals 3. Which ones are going to be perpendicular to each other? What are you looking for for perpendicular? You're looking for opposite reciprocals, right? So these two are perpendicular to each other. Well, that's a horizontal line, right? And that's a vertical line. Are those going to be perpendicular to each other? Yeah, so these are perpendicular and those are perpendicular. What's the opposite reciprocal to if I gave you negative 7x plus 2 and I said write this equation, write an equation of any line that's perpendicular to that. What is the opposite reciprocal of negative 7? You gotta flip it. This would be 7 over 1, so this is gonna be 1 over 7. And then negative 5. Okay? So if it's a whole number, it's just gonna be 1 over that number. Easy enough? So, some of these are just like, if you look at like 9, 10, and 11, those are just recognition. Which ones are parallel to each other? Just group them. 13, 14, 15, the same thing. Which ones are perpendicular to each other? They're just grouping. Easy? Turn page. When you get to question number 22, it says write an equation of a line in slope intercept form that's parallel to the line that's given, and it goes through that point. Well, if they give us y equals 3x minus 7, and they give us the point 0, 4, it's got to be parallel to this, which means in my new one, what's the slope? Y equals 1 over So y equals 3x. Now I still got to find the b. Do I know the b in this case? Yes. How do you know it's 4? Because the x is 0. That's on the y-axis. I know the answer to this is just y equals 3x plus 4. I don't actually have to plug in for x and y in this case or use point slope form. If they give me a point on the y-axis, I know that that has to be my y-intercept. And I can just plug that in. So the answer to that question is just y equals 3x plus 4. If they said perpendicular to this, and goes through this point. What's the opposite reciprocal of 3? Three. Negative 1 third? Yeah. So the answer would just be y equals negative 1 third x plus 4. Because the 4 would still be the y-intercept, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So 22 through 33, use the same slope, plug in the point. If you look at 33, What's the problem with 33 right now? It's not in slope intercept form. So you may have to put this in slope intercept form just to figure out what the slope is. So I would move the 3x to the other side to become negative 3x. Still got the 8 there. Then I would have to divide by 4. Now, I know right now, what's my slope? My slope is negative 3 fourths. I don't even really care that this is 2. Because all I'm going to use is this, and then i got to use that point. Now again, you can use y equals mx plus b, you can use point slope form, 
most of you tend to like the y equals mx plus b. We know the slope is negative 3 fourths now. I can plug in my x and my y, solve this for b, and I would have my answer. Are we good with these? The only difference between the parallel ones and the perpendicular ones is instead of using the exact same slope, what am I going to use? I'm going to use the opposite reciprocal. Does that make sense? All right. So 